Hey everybody, I wanted to do a video where people have sort of questioned can I actually test gas masks in an enclosed space of air freshener because that's surely cheating and it's not really um, testing a gas mask. So obviously when I do gas mask test videos I just use air fresheners like this and I spray quite a lot in an enclosed space. And if you're familiar with air fresheners, sort of deodorants, that kind of thing, when you spray a lot in an enclosed space it sort of really gets down you and it's not a pleasant thing. So the point is, can I wear a gas mask and will it stop me smelling it and will it stop me choking on it? And the idea is obviously, yes, a gas mask will do that if it works. Um, but a lot of people said that's not a real test because if you tested a real gas, then the gas mask would fail. Well, maybe yes and no. If you had a really old gas mask and um, you tested something like blister agent against it, then yeah, there's a chance that the blister agent might actually damage you know, the weaker parts of the mask and the mask would fail. But against most things people are interested in with a surplus mask, that's not the case. Now, what you have to understand is, as I've said before about ABEC filters, you have organic vapour, inorganic vapour, acidic gases, and sort of ammonia-based gases. And most NBC or CBRN filters give you the sort of full ABEC thing. Some of them I think are just technically ABE rather than ABEC, but regardless, the organic vapour and inorganic vapour bit is the most important part, because basically... Um, Stuff like this isn't actually organic vapour, stuff like chlorine gas is an inorganic vapour. So if you have a filter that stops organic and inorganic vapour, that stops a lot of chemical weapons. So if you test a filter and you spray air freshener, which is an organic vapour, and your filter stops it, that means the organic vapour part of the filter is working. But when I'm doing these tests, I'm not so much testing the filter, because obviously everybody knows that if you buy a brand new filter and put on the mask, it will work. The point I'm making is, do the masks still work if they get a bit old? Um, like in regards to face seals and everything else, valves working and regardless of what you're spraying, if it doesn't affect you and you've got the right kind of filter on when you've got a mask on airtight, the mask works it's really simple, there's no way of getting around that so people have said to me, you know, if you're doing a f if you have a proper fit test done of a mask that's actually done with, you know, really strong chem chemicals I think some use banana oils there's a couple of other things, but they're still organic vapours. They're just much stronger smelling, so you're more likely to notice it. But if you're doing a really proper fit test, you wouldn't even do that at all. You'd actually use a machine that checks the pressure inside the mask and the pressure outside the mask, and it can detect a leak that way. Now, another important thing to know is that historically, when you were given masks in military service or anything like that, you'd have your face measured, they'd get you the best fitting mask, you'd be told to do the straps up as tight as possible, you get put in the gas chamber and exposed to CS gas, tear gas, um, and then if you you know weren't choking and spluttering, the mask worked. And again, that's not that dissimilar from what I'm doing here. If I had tear gas, I'd happily test the mask with tear gas outside somewhere in a shed, but uh, in the UK you can't exactly buy tear gas as a civilian. So the point is though, CS agent is actually a particulate, not a vapour, but the you know, same thing still stands. If it can't get into the mask when you've got a filter on it, the mask works. There's no getting around that. So to say, you know, your tests are inaccurate because you are spraying something in the air that's really easy to block. No, it's still an organic vapour. Gases don't have this magical qualities. They fit into certain groups, and if that group is stopped by the filter, then the mask works. And as I said, I'm not testing the filters per se. I am testing the masks. And if you're in an enclosed space and nothing gets through the filter, that means nothing can get through the mask as well because the mask is airtight to your face and the mask works, all the valves in the mask work. So, that's not actually an argument. Um, so yeah, there you go. If you are interested in testing a mask, if you do test it in an enclosed space, when you spray a lot of stuff, don't spray a little bit, just spray quite a fair bit, so you know it would be very unpleasant to be in a room without a mask on, and you know the filter blocks it, and nothing gets through, and you're not choking, the mask works. It's as simple as, it doesn't matter if you're using some sort of expensive banana oil or just spraying a load of this stuff. The reason, you know, all those things are used is because some, you know, like health and safety type laws, I think the American ones call something like OSHA, something like that. Um, it's basically safety in the workplace laws. If you're required to use a respirator for your job and that's there to save your life, you obviously have to test it properly. They use a very strong smelling chemical and expensive testing gear but it's just a much more advanced way of doing this basically you're still using an organic vapour to see if the fil filter can block it if the filter can block it and there's nothing else getting into the mask it works so this isn't pseudoscience this is actually how they do it just in a much more complicated and expensive way so there you go if you're wondering if these tests worked they do 
they're actually legitimate because I'm using an organic vapor just as you know all of the other boards that use banana oil and the other strong smelling things use an organic vapor to test a mask so there you go